I think we're going into the game number one then, and let's have a look at the compositions here. We can see something, like we already had a sneak peek at what uh, Lich had in store for us. It looked like a very tanky composition, honestly, like very, very, you know, defense focused with the Arbalest, the Flagellant and the MAA wow. supported by the Jester. So this plays very slowly. Oh, I think yeah. oh. Silentia's composition is also quite a slow one overall. Uh, so you have like double stun control deck here, assisted by this Abomination and the Houndmast. Actually, I was talking about this composition on my stream some some weeks ago, like two weeks ago. So this was initially at least looking pretty solid. I think we tested this with Silentia. So he brings it to the table. So it is kind of interesting to see this here on the stage. So what this composition does very well is like it can stun up to three targets. It can also just abuse the oppo the opposition with the Houndmaster's trinkets choice, which you know allow you to stack a huge, huge amount of stress and bleed. And finally, abomination can also be used to repose. So all those mechanics are just very, very big overall. I feel like Silentia's composition, like I feel like this match is going to be quite an even one overall. Well, I think here we're seeing the duality of man. Coming from Life's to Lich, we have the Arbalest to clear stuns. We've got the Flagellant, the Jester, and the Mana Arms. On Silentia, we're seeing this stun-heavy build. We've got one with no stuns, heavy control, all about debuffs, single-target kind of finale, that terrifying threat, coupled with the heavy, heavy duties of the Flagellant and the Jester. I mean, right now, I think... If Silenti doesn't get the Arbalest into uh, position three to really lock him down with stuns, the Lich could really control this into maybe a turn 11, turn 15 victory. But the thing you have to kind of realize as well is that you really don't need to be stunning more than one target as Silentia because you have a lot of offensive abilities on the Crusader, on the Abom, and on the Houndmaster. So, you know, the Vesta can be used as this kind of a stun bot just to keep the Jester in check, whereas all the other characters can be just used to spam out enormous amounts of stress. And that's what they do That's very a very well, impressive actually. riposte there from uh, Life's Lich. Getting it in before the Houndmaster's Harry there. Going to get that riposte in. Obviously, as well, the Abomination in position two. He might be wanting to throw a riposte out here on turn one rather than a transform. It's anyone's yeah. decision right now. Yeah, so we see the jet uh, with the Vessel here. I think you just, if you are Silentia, you really want to control this Jester, keep him in check, prevent those stacks of Finale from, you know, ramping up. And just play this slow and steady. Because honestly, I like, with this super high control deck with the amount of stress you have from the transformations and oh. those beast piles, this is going to be huge. He goes for a stun on the flagellum, so maybe he's just very interesting. He's trying to mitigate the uh the, the ridiculous, ridiculous damage you get out of that flagellum, yes. especially with a hammer. Yeah. But this jester here, dropping a battle ballad, he's setting up on this turn. Silenti doesn't need to be too worried, I suppose. Yeah. But what Silenti does need to do right now is just really, really, really take control. Keep everyone locked down. Apply DOTs. If you start stunning people before those Hounds Harrys are out, before you get a little bit of blight on them, maybe, from the Abomination, the stuns really, all they're going to do is stop them, freeze them for a turn, but not leverage any advantage. Oh, that, that yeah, oh. That's weird. I really would expect him to just be spamming Hounds Harrys. You know, granted that oh, this is also removing uh, the stun being removed here from the flash. You can just restun the Crusader, though. That should be relatively easy uh, to do for for uh, Silentia here. Well, I think um, talking about that Hound's Rush, I think he was trying to um, make himself not be put on the back foot right off the bat with a crit repost. I think perhaps just trying to um, threaten the Jester with Death's Door. Obviously, that would make him play more defensively with the Arbalest. What do you make of the stun on the MAA instead of stunning the Flagellant here, though? Because I feel like, you know, it's not really that valuable to stun the MAA right now, because this means that next turn, you basically waste the Vestal's turn, because, you know, you, ha you have two targets stunned. Well, the stun just here is for this reason, this reason in particular. When stunned, you can't repost. This was a very, yeah. very, very smart play from Silentia, I think. Perhaps the, uh, the Hound's Rush on turn one was thinking a little bit too hard, but this stun into Hound's Harry there, was that was a pressing play. So the question is like, when does Silentia use the stuns now? Does he wait for this MA to come out of the stun, or does he just use the Vestal instantaneously? Because if he doesn't wait, uh, this yeah. is just going to be... Oh, never mind, he can just stun right away. This is okay, he can just stun right now. Because the, the Arbalest is just inert. I think this is like very bad play from Lich, honestly. I don't like it at all. Because he just kind of allows uh, allows triple stun right now from Silentia. He's just going to make use of this. Like, this is a very big opening. 
Um, so receives Lens here, jumping to take advantage of it there. Obviously, with the Arbalest taking his turn first in the order, it's just to heal, not even clear the stun on that Mana Arms. Um, Lich has potentially lost lost the game in this yeah. turn, I, I think. Yeah. This, I mean, this is a terrible. ridiculous tempo shift. This is really bad for him. Like, you, you, it's, it's like hard to understate how bad this was. You can get like triple stun, you can get like this gesture locked down indefinitely right now. And that's just so, so painful to experience. You get the, probably the stun on the fact, oh, he resists this, actually. So yeah, I mean, um, with 75% base resist, that stun yeah, is quite high. It's, it's, a, it's a coin flip. It's a coin flip that you're not going to get every time. Yeah. And now, we're seeing that fledgling just punish the backline. Are those bleeds going to hit? Yeah. A no. mixture of both. That's resisted still a lot of damage sticking down. You've also resisted both, though. So I guess the, the a is just going to go for transformation. Yes, yeah, so, so he's going to start stacking the stress here. There is no snuff on the flagellant, so you can probably just push him right now with this. Yeah, you, you can just deny another turn from the flag. But this actually allows you to use the healing right now, so this is not such a bad situation. Something uh, also to note very quickly is pushing the flagellant back normally would be terrifying because you push the jester into rank two, but obviously stunned now. You can just, you've got enough stuns to lock him down the yeah. whole game. You stun with just... Vestal, Arbor Clay, stun with Crusader. <sighs> Yeah, there's no ballad. Okay, this Jesse has no no monkey pose, so there is like very low dodge actually on him. So it, it's it's just gonna be perma stun right now. And even if you remove the stun of the Arbalest, it's still going to be the second stun coming from the vest and potentially the third stun from the from the abomination as well. So I don't think you ever get control of this Jester like ever in this game. Like, that this guard is there, quite a quite a, an, an interesting play from Nature. What he's hoping is that the Man at Arms with 70 base stun resist is going to win a coin flip or two on that stun. Keep the Jester defended just for the... Really, you only need one good turn as Jester to completely shift the game. 180 it. Take it from a you know a heavy loss into a four versus three. Yeah, was a, the question is, like, can't he just... Can't Salenshi just keep this MAA in check right now? Because I feel he has both stun trinkets on the Vestals. He can just keep the MAA stand on top of everything. Um, it's not 100%. It, it isn't 100%. And we saw that with a fledgling as well. You can't always rely on that. Yeah, it's true. Mm. It's, it's about 80, though. If you have double trinkets on the Vesta and this MA has no stun resistance. What are we going to do? This is interesting. Are we going to see an illuminating flow or a heal? What's he going to do? Yeah, this flare. So that's a, that's wow, a we're restart. Gonna dead, dead, we're going to see a dead flag here. We're going to see a dead flag there. Yeah, I think so. I mean, you have to be hesitant with the Houndmaster activation right now because if you activate the Houndmaster, and you actually don't heal yourself, you might just die to the finale right now. Although you have to take into consideration the fact that this Jester hasn't been able but to do much. Is, even if he lick wounds, I'm not sure. It's okay. That I think he's going to be fine. He's yeah, I feel this is going to be fine. Because the Jester has very little buffs on him. So it might be just still enough. 40% damage buff. That's, he has to crit to kill this do right fish, now. Do you fish for a crit? Do you fish for a crit? Or do you just go for a harvest mm -hmm. here? I don't know. Honestly, like this is... I, I feel like... Life Slish is in a terrible spot right now, See, so every single little bit matters. Uh, for, I, I, I would probably go for the finale here. Um, what, we did, what we did see here, though, is Silentia not able to fish for the killing blow on the, the Flagellant. Yeah, but he can just he heal this right now. He can just heal the Houndmaster even more, or just go for a stun on the MAA, just kind of look into the future, and try to just you know get rid of the, of the guard indefinitely again. So I'm just kind of curious as to I mean Lich played this very well. He kind of uh, anticipated what Silencio was gonna do, so he prevented the sound of the jester, cleansed it on time, used the guard when you know this was just going to open up the jester uh, into this into this fight. But I don't think this is enough. So oh, we're this. gonna see, we're gonna see, we're gonna see. Here we go. That's, He's gonna that's drop 50, it. 50, that's Nine 50, to 50. sixteen. Oh. Uh, that's, that's just GG. That's Second over. the lowest roll he could have got that. That is really unfortunate to see here. Mm, it was a coin flip, though. It was indeed a coin flip. Well, it was a coin flip plus the uh, the 10% there from Chris, so it was definitely in the Lich's favor. Oh, it's true. It's true. It's a, uh, a finale is such an important move to... If you waste it, if you go for a 50-50, it's just... I feel like it just is never worth going for a 50-50 unless you're, like, super desperate. And I don't think Lich was desperate enough to be going for it right now. He would have waited a single turn, just cleansed the stuns, and, you know, just gone for it again. And right now, his Arbalest well, is going to get stunned. The Arbalest is out of the I fight. Think in the same vein, using that finale does push him back, so his flagellant can now act and attack both of the backline here. If we can maybe see going for a Dirk stab, and then some kind of 
you know, small damage from DOTs here and there. Resist the could go for a death blow just with the Reign of Sorrows on that hand master there. Hmm. I'm just really thinking about this. Like, what does Lynch do? I think he can just stun lock the Arbalest and then stun lock everybody else as well and just keep spamming damage with the hand master. It's just going to be okay. Because he's well, a stress comp. He is not playing a damage composition here. He's primarily playing a stress comp, I feel. And it's turn four, and there isn't much stress on Lich here, though. So I think for Silentia, now the finale, he doesn't need to be scared of that at all. I think you really want him to just go heavy on this stress, get it finished by turn seven. Yeah. There are no afflictions yet, so there'll be no act outs. The longer the game lasts, the more those act outs really amplify off each other. I guess for a risky player, I thought he was going to lick wounds again. He doesn't do this, though. Yeah, and this right. Jester can Derek stab right now. He can take down the Houndmaster easily. And if you, lose the, if you lose the Houndmaster right now, I feel like Silentia is kind of going to be in a lot of trouble because like in this stun core composition, I feel like this is just going to be very little stress damage that can come out of, of just the Hound, uh, you know, of the team that doesn't have the Houndmaster. I mean, may, he might have been hoping for an affliction pass. No, he doesn't get it. Oh. It's going to be a death. It's going to be a death blow with a finish. That was a big mistake. That was I a think huge mistake. Really yeah, we've seen that's basically getting the finale there for free. Yeah. So it's completely changed now. Silentia really has to be right. He doesn't have enough stress on board right now to um to think he's got this in the bag. He doesn't have a man at arms to really prolong the game. None of these three characters left alive have really much good kind of self-sustain good solo carry ability it's it's looking quite grim all of a sudden i, I think if he had just healed this and stayed alive for a single turn longer he'd have like Ooh, okay this flash there. might die though this flash might just die yeah. <laughs> that's funny but that was uh, something the guard I, I don't know, re as far as this fight, uh, this is gonna be dead though it's not okay i feel like 80 percent, 80 percent won't go through i think yeah it's just going to be really rough right now. Those, this is just dire straits for Silentia. I feel like this just... Uh, it, he just turned this fight around himself. He brought this yeah. up on himself, I feel. I think just, we've all learned a very, very important lesson in this game. And it's, uh, um, boys, lick. You love to lick. Keep licking. <laughs> Come on. You're going to oh, be God. dead and your bitch is going to be sat over you crying. Look at that corpse. I, he, 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 I, I, have, I don't know what to say to this, man. I have no idea what to say to this. He could have actually, I, he could have gone for this flash kill. I think like that's I, that's what I would have done anyway. Just go for the flash, and, and as long as Arbalest hasn't healed yet, you, you still get a chance to even things out. And with the flash alive, you have to imagine this is going to be very soon over. Um, uh, for for Silentia. you really need to kill this. So yeah, that's just opportunity going out of the window right now. Another and... thing about Flagellant is, um, just to interject very quickly, if you are going to take him down to Death Store in one turn, you need to hit him with as many abilities in that single turn as you can. Because every time he is healed out of Death Store, boom, his Death Blow gets reset. That is an incredibly, incredibly potent tool. Yeah, that's just... I have no idea what Silentia can do. Right? I mean, the Act Outs can still save him, but like losing this Houndmaster, which is absolutely vital for his composition, is just going to hurt him so much right now. Can you we've imagine? Seen him, we've seen him pivot to Zealous Accusation, which is very smart. Very, yeah. very smart. Yeah, because he's stacking a lot of pressure still. So, you know, just damage might not save him, but like the damage and the stress from Zealous Accusation, both of which are very, very big overall, I think they might just do enough. But this Flagellant really has to has to start doing some sort of, of healing to him. So I, just, I, just, I, I don't think this is a right move. Nor do I. I think we're seeing... We saw very, very solid play outside of one misplay on both sides. But right now, we're seeing the uh, the strategy just kind of completely fall down. Maybe... Uh, Here we go again. Maybe... Oh, okay. he gets it there. He gets it there. Changing around there. That Flagellant, the most important character to stay alive. Yeah. He's the reign of stars instead of healing. Why did he wait? Why, why was he so greedy with this? He could have just... Unnecessary healed. risks. Obviously, this was going to be like lower healing, but this just turns the fight around again because this is an inert jester. This is an arbalest that really doesn't do much against, you know, rank one and against like uh, like equal numbers. And this is MAA who is like about to die, honestly. I feel like against Silentia holds the advantage. This is like such a swingy fight. I think it's with pure stress Silentia holds the advantage. Even if it was a damage comp, we would have to say that Silentia does hold the advantage just because he's got the 
two healing characters rather yeah. than just the one with the arbalest. And also the arbalest, the only healing character, is also the only character that can clear the stuns. So Salenti really can apply physical damage pressure, can apply stress pressure and stun pressure. He's got three different prongs of his attack, and the Lich here only really has one. But my chat is telling me though, uh, they're, they're saying that Lich only had like 100% heal debuff on this flash, not 50%. Oh, okay, well, yeah. We this is much no, having no fucking few emotes, you know, we can't see that. We yeah. It's kind of sad, but it's like, I, I'm not really sure. So you'd have to go back to this. They might be right, this, this might have been 100%. So then he had no they choice. Are probably right, yeah. Uh, yeah, because I feel like Flitch is, is good enough a player to realize that this was just an opening he didn't want to miss out on. So is this able on 0 HP or on 1? It's on 1. Oh my god, it's on one, 1 HP. Hell. Oh no, it's, it's 1. So you can just always heal this. Even if he goes down he's to zero right now. Harvest the Crusade here, 70% bleed, yeah. probably won't get it through. You don't want to be doing this. So, I think I, that I was feel... a tilted play. I think you still Dark out the Abomination. <sighs> it looks like I think this is going to be Silencia win here, but it's such an even game. We might, we might very well see three games in this series because it's just such an even, even matchup here. If this was a match of boxing, we would call it a draw, wouldn't we? Yeah, yeah, they're like all, they're like all almost dead. But I feel like Silencia might get this, might get to clash this fight seriously. I think Silencia definitely holds the advantage here just because of that stress, those miss, those act outs here. We've got to hope, really, are going to do what they are. You see, bingo. That's why we have. Them. That's why a stress damage hybrid like this is ridiculous. Your death still. I don't want your healing. I'm paranoid. I don't want your fucking healing. You're dead. It's that simple, Mike. I think that Vestal can actually just stun the Jester and kill him with the stun because she's just going to do enough stress. I think that, like, you know, the double yeah. stress bonus might be just enough. I'm not sure if this is like, you know, 180 or 184. If this is 184 stress, the Vestal just instantly kills the Jester with the stress alone. So this Something is just so big. You don't even realize about that stun. It applies to yeah. stress. Death blow. Oh, we can do it as well. Like, that's, that's fine too. Works. Benefit of having both the stress and the damage as an option of your attack here. Silentia here, he had far more options than the Lich, even when he was put on that kind of the back spot with his Houndmaster dying there. Yeah, can we touch up on this MAA on Lich's composition? I just kind of realized this is kind of an odd pick overall, right? Because you can have something else on this high damage composition. You can, for instance, try to take a Leper with you to, you know, boost your damage. We can take a Crusader to get some control. So I feel like this is quite a peculiar choice of the MAA here, who basically brings Repose to the table and that's it for the pure damage compositions. What's even more peculiar about that is um, he doesn't have command on it. No. If you are taking the Man at Arms as a kind of support character in this build, you would... Oh, he does, he does. My he bad, does, sorry. Neat, yeah. My bad. That's a dead MAA, though. That's a dead MMA, MAA. And Man at Arms, go to sleep. Yeah, this is this is GG. I feel like you know, there is no stress on Silentia. This Arbalest is resolved broken, uh, and there's like yeah. indefinite amount of healing on, on Silentia's side right now. You can just heal the Vestal every single turn, and there's zero threat Lich has right now against Silentia's composition. He, he, basically, Silentia made it through with three characters still alive. This is so so big for him. This is yeah, I believe this is without like beyond done. Just because all three characters left can all heal. But I think an interesting thing to note about this game is, um, what I fucking forgot, bro. <laughs> Based. Oh yeah, so it's turn nine. We're seeing two very, very high sustained comps here. Flagellant Arbalest, Crusader Vestal. I think uh, life's a lich here. If you just kept that Flagellant alive a little bit longer, just played a little bit more safe with that, this could have maybe been a turn 13 win because he has the DOT advantage here. He kind of, it's an either plays game, really. Does the DOT go quicker than the stress? You need to apply that early pressure first to make sure coming to these late games, you have that advantage. And that really is what Salenti did here. Yeah, I'm also very happy because this is a composition that I made, but it's actually successful at something. So I'm pretty hyped that this is actually working out <laughs> for someone. First, like for once at least, you know, that's kind of funny. Salenti is going to, um, listen, Mike, the Mikefield boys are going to win this tournament. So be proud of that, at least. Yeah, I'm Unless super proud, Halo. yeah. Unless it's Halo. 
Yeah, this is working out super well for Salenshi, I think. Your life's a lich, what do you do? So I don't think he, um, I don't I, think his comp, I think it's an even comp. It's a really even comp here. Yeah, I think like you just, you just play without mistakes and you're okay. Frankly, if you just make fewer mistakes, you should be okay as, as a lich. That, that's, that's kind of a moot point to say. I think um, that mm. if they're making a mistake now, they're both going to make a mistake. Obviously, we are seeing them take their turns pretty quickly. You pretty know what? You know up. what? You can optimize a lot, though. You can switch a lot of trinkets right now, knowing that, you know, this Arbless is saving the very far, very furthest position, yeah. the fourth position, because there's like zero ways of pulling her. So you can take like either more offensive items, or you can take some more healing right now in the place of the snuff. And that's probably going to work for you. Resist the dead blow. So I think you can, uh, you no, can just. I'm, I'm saying take the snuff off the Arbalest, put it on the yeah. mana types, maybe. Yeah, just to secure the guards, on. right? Just to secure that's the guards. It's very smart. I like the idea, yeah. Also, something else. Accuracy plus guards, that kind of two-turn combo. The Jester is going to be finale. If you're playing kind of efficiently and you are given the opportunity, you want to finale by turn two to three, really. Yeah. Especially against the stress comp, right? Yeah, because like the more characters you kill, like the, the easier it gets, really, for you to, to deal with the stress then teams right that's just the rule of this is rule of thumb here for you if you play against stress and that's a very peculiar stress comp as well because it's it bases on the you know the stun core like with the vessel and the crusader and then you just you know play the slow as a silencia and you slowly whittle your opponent down so if you lose a character very early on into the fight it just should allow you i mean it should just make make your life very very difficult all of a sudden so if, for instance, Lich goes very aggressive with this Arbalest, maybe, you know, tries to shut down perhaps the Houndmaster again or the Abomination, I think he, he holds a decent advantage in this overall. So I'd say the most kind of the biggest bonus in Salenti's composition is that the Abomination is a very weak character by itself, easy to be all oh, We see a Mace Bash really weird instead of something. <laughs> yeah, funny. But um, the Abomination quite weak. If you don't have a composition that can support him, you might not even be able to get all of his stress horror out. So he's, yeah. he's kind of his whole point is moot. But with these double stuns, obviously this Crusader Vestal Core, two stuns, two heals, it, it's it's brutal. It's a very uh, oppressive core. Yeah, so I think Lich needs to yeah. take something very powerful, very explosive. Just a boom, you're down in one turn. It potentially even triple stuns, right? If if Lich makes a mistake, like before with those of the Arbalest healing on the very first move of a turn. I think he's just going to be done for this. Is the, GG, I think this just sealed the deal. This just sealed the that, deal here. Yeah, I think the two the two pivotal turns there were one, Silentia not licking himself with his Houndmaster, <laughs> and the other was... Um, Oops, I was muted. Uh, good yeah. game. Yeah, GG, man. GG, guys, GG. Three pivotal points there, actually. The, uh, Incredible, that match, right, guys? The first match go to Silentia. Congratulations. Thank you. So let's go to see the next match. Lich, by the way, could you could you try to maybe improve the quality of the stream a little bit? Because it's just kind of chunky for me. It's pretty slow overall. The um, frame rate is just extremely low right now for us. I think we've got it. I think I think the only it tried I mean, it's already at 720. Yeah, I don't mousing, think that's... Mouse over things more. You're not going to be able to increase the quality right now. Yeah. Just try mousing over things a little bit more. Look over the kind of debuffs and things for us, please. That would be really helpful. Yeah, okay, It's at 720p. Nice that's fine. That's fine. Let's just keep going the yeah. way it is. I could go up. Like, there's no, no, 1080. No, 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 no. I think. It's okay. It's okay, brother. I'm sorry. No, it's fine. It, it, it won't help then. It, it's fine. Just... Remember, you've got time here to change your trinkets. Don't fucking yeah. get bogged down by a stalking to you. Take this time to mm -hmm. fucking win the tournament. Think. You've got, you know, let's say five minutes to have a big think, a big change your trinkets. Um, I'm yeah. probably just going to change one uh, if you guys want to oh, no, fucking, don't switch away. You, bro. <laughs> That's information you didn't have to give out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Mike. Strategy-wise, do you think there was a giant error from either player? Because I think their strategies were both fairly, fairly perfect. I didn't see a giant misplay from either of them there, like we did in the uh, previous series. I, I want to. I, I think I want Lich to hold on to Arbalest turns a bit more than he was holding on to them, because I, I just think that he wasted a lot of opportunities there with this Arbalest. You know, just using the ability, Sorry, her abilities guys, too soon. I'm here. And then just not the allowing for those uh, for, for the stun cleanse to come through. I think this was just kind of the biggest issue for Lich. 
and then Silencio made like some minor minor mistakes that he can fix as well. So I'm just kind of curious to see what what's gonna happen. I feel like not healing this Hamas as you've already said, like as we've highlighted in you innumerable always, always times. Like, we'll, it will be sad. We've already yeah. established that. Everybody <laughs> remembers yeah. that. Look. So uh, I'm ready to go. Let's just see how this All goes right, right now. Here. Good luck, man. Here Good luck. Go. Go game two. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Lich, if you mute and deafen yourself, will the stream stop? If I what? Mute and deafen yourself, will the stream stop? I don't believe so, because I was yeah, during the mute match. And deafen yourself. Yeah, mute and deafen, yeah. Sorry, mute and deafen them, please. Thank you. They can't hear what we're saying. Yeah. Good luck, guys. Let's see what, is hap what happens right now. Uh, so... I'm interested to see the uh, the trinket changes. I think Salenta is probably going to uh, sit steady. He might have put a movement trinket on his Abomination just to get the 100% against the Flagellant. But I think the Lich here, the onus is on him here. He is really the one that needs to maybe tinker around a little bit, go a little bit more aggressive, try and push through that stress. Mm. Yeah, we've already seen like some. I, I was kind of watching Lich's screen, so we, we I already know that this MAA has changed the trinket, so he has the incense right now, which means he has some bonus stun res. I'm surprised though by people taking incense over, uh, it's over the other other stuff. I just don't understand the reason for that. Well, I think uh, the incense. I we saw two incenses against my stress comp in the last game, the last uh, game I played, and it was incredibly effective. The bellow from the man at arms only doing six stress. Six stress. How how many turns is that to get to two hundred stress? I'm not a mathematician. It's a fuck lot, yeah. Yeah, that's true. But at the very same time, though, like playing against double stuns, I feel is just such a huge detriment. Not having that snuff, if you can have this bonus twenty percent stun res, because this might be the difference between you getting stunned like twice in a row or not getting stunned at all. On those no, well, turns. we need to remember we get um we get a plus fifty. Man alarm starts at 70, it goes up to what 80, 100. I think it's a little bit a little bit kind of crazy to pivot your entire game plan over pushing for the pardon me, the last 20% stun resist there. I think he's got to imagine he's going to be stunned a lot. He's happy if you know eight out of ten of them don't land. Yeah. He has that apostille as well. That's a brutal, brutal trinket to have if you are um, against a hound master in particular. An abomination that can use his stress repost ability. This to hit the middle two. If he had a repost active right there instead of the accuracy or the uh, bolster, rather, could have been a heavy hit. Could have put him down to nearly enough death stall with the DOT. Mm. Yeah, at the same time, you really want to have the bolster up, right? Just. Oh, like if you play against a stress comp, this 15% stress reduction is just huge. Especially if you stack some stress reduction trinkets as well. So maybe, maybe, maybe like Lich has taken the mathematical edge as you're saying here with the numbing incense on on this MAA. He might be able to take this one. And there's like absolute silencious there. Just I'm, I'm actually very, very curious about this one. What we're seeing this ta this uh, game as well is we see Silentia using a Hound's Harry on two instead of a Hound's Rush on the Jester. That is entirely because the Mud at Arms didn't use his repost there. If he used his repost there, he would have actually, I think, been in better stead than if he used his bolster, just yeah. because of the kind of the threat put posed rather to the Abomination and the Houndmaster when they're using their AOE damage. Yeah, tell you the truth, like he could have just bolstered turn two. This is a resisted though. This is such a low chance. I think Silentia is running double stuns. It's like five percent chance to resist I've that stun. Literally stamp. five percent. Five percent. That's ridiculous. You hate this shit. That's just brutal. That's just brutal RNG for Silentia. I, I just... think for Silentia, we need to be happy. It's on it's on turn one. It's not the most pivotal thing in the world. You can account for it going into the later turns. This kind of RNG, if you want it, you know, if you're gonna have to get a five percent chance, you really want to see it right now. No, again, again, again. no freaking way. This is like a bit higher yeah. chance to resist, but still, you this is ridiculous. The worst thing about this as well, yeah. now this flagellant pushed to such low health, boom. The abomination in very, very... Oh, God damn it. Blight resistance, Jesus. that's going to be a 9 oh. by 4 a 9 by 4 uh, That's annoying. It's like, there is no other way to put it. Like, this should not have happened, I feel. This should just not have happened. I think we're playing Darkest Dungeon. Oh, no, 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 no. You know, sometimes yeah, things if, just you go, miss, yeah. if you miss that first stun, you're less likely to hit with the second stun. Maybe you should just go, 
no, I need to not kind of double down here on this kind of uh, loss efficiency conundrum. Just go for a zealous accusation, apply the stress, get the flagellant, maybe even stress, you know, this turn. He's got pretty high stress right now. So I, if I was Silentia, apply that pressure a lot more heavily, at least until the first set of afflictions are all present. Yeah. He's also doing a very smart thing with the A-bomb. That's what I was kind of advertising on my streams. So you play Abomination and you use the Repose. You have to just use it and then just wait and activate him last on the following turn. This means you just make the most out of the Repose. This mean, also means that the Repose is always active. You can just transform now as Silentia and then I just go back. Flight, right? So he transforms now. Good. Watch, he just transforms the A-bomb. He pushes the Flagellant. And at the very start of the following turn, I think, he just goes back to the human form. He probably just, or maybe he doesn't even, he doesn't even push the flag. Maybe he just goes for some sort of damage on the on the Jester here. And at the start of the next turn, he also just goes back to the human form. And he activates, oh, he, never mind. I think I was absolutely confident he was going to transform here. I, I think this maybe Slint here is trying, um, uh, that was that was a very heavy control play, but we need to understand he's against a really strong DOT build. Yeah needs at least it's going to be six seven turns to really utilize all of that horror and stress get all of that take down um he's going to be on the defensive in a few turns now i don't That's, think he's really going to have the chance to to kind of play aggressively that long into the game it was, it was actually a very smart play because this means the jester is denied a turn with no recourse again and this means I think he dropped the ballad and this is it. That's all she wrote for the Jester so far. She, he's at zero HP right now. He's activated. He just dies very, very quickly. So I feel like Silencia is actually doing a very, very good job. This was a very, very interesting play from him. Like the the idea to stun the Jester instead of just going for this, you know, um, reasonable play, which is, you know, transformation and just getting the stress to stack up. I feel like, I feel like this was kind of a very, very heads up play from him and we have to just command him for just making that call because if he had not done this you know you, can, you have to imagine that this this is just a uh, wow. harvest coming down as well harvest comes down you know the the album takes the the damage the um sorry the hand master takes the damage as well and this suddenly looks quite quite bad for silentia but right now we have the just at zero hp little he can do against the hound master as well so i feel like the hound master might just go for it. i i feel silentia might just go for this kill here on the Jester, uh, potentially. I mean, though he's dropped a guard there, so um, the only thing he can really hit is a, I think, a slam that breaks guard, and I don't think you can do that on the third row. Ooh, or is this? I mean, the Hellmaster can just drop the the Harry right now, though. He can just Harry this guy to death. The Hellmaster, yeah. So you're the Lich right now. What are you doing? How are you playing? What are you feeling? More so. Uh, I think I think this is still an even game. All in all, so I, I think you just play your you just play your game. You hope the jester doesn't die right now. If, he just, if the jester is still alive after this turn, um, so it's gonna be like so. Let's just start next next turn though. So there's gonna be trouble if the jester dies. Now he doesn't. So right now, right now we just go for the a bomb as Salencia. Just push the jester away. I think that's, that's the safe play because this means you cannot just remove the stun and Hope abuse it's the really jester. Really unfortunate one to take as well. He's going to be passing a lot yeah. more often than he would with masochistic. So. So what we probably see from Salentro now is the push on the Jester, right? It's just, I feel like this is the most optimal play he can make. Oh, it also breaks the guards. This is the yeah, only thing. I, I the, think life's a lich him. Do it. Quite a fundamental misplay by Dirk stabbing instead of harvesting. Yeah. He didn't quite pay heed to the fact that Salentro can um, do this and kill him, really. Yeah, he's going to break the guard at least. He breaks the guard right now. If he hits this, if he misses, though, this is going to be so bad for him. He rake. probably loses Hellmaster. Oh no, that's a dodge. Maybe, maybe you would have liked to see oh. a rake there, actually. Uh, no, he, 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 he actually... Down, maybe got a kill on the... Bam. Oh, wow. Here, I think we might see a game three here. That yeah, one it looks three. like it, definitely. <laughs> this is the finale coming down from the Jester right now. Like, there's no way of preventing this. He can stun this, then, like, the Arbalest cleanses. Wow. Uh... I feel like if you play this right as Lich, you're always going to get the uh, go, going to get this uh, finale right now on the HM. I mean, barring RNG in two abilities, life yeah. to Lich here has changed a definite loss into a four versus two match. Yeah. Entirely pivotal on that one dodged slam there. Completely ridiculous play. This is why you always need to account for RNG in the Darkest Dungeon. Yeah, why not finale though? 
I am so surprised not to see the finale going down. It's like, why would you do maybe, this? Maybe we can use the finale versus the Vestal in, say, the Home Master. He was like, you know? But he gets oh. stunned right now. He doesn't use it at all right now. That's the problem. He could have just conserved. Like, yes. He could have just used it before on the on anybody. I think this gesture can kill anyone right now. It's just very baffling to me. Like, I just don't understand this, really. I just don't understand this. We're seeing... Um... Perhaps the strategies fall down here again on this turn four mark, like we saw in the last game. Starting to just play weirdly, I think, is a really safe way to say that. That guard is going to be completely mitigated by the Hounds Harry. Um, we want to see this aggressive push. I think these guys are a little bit too scared to aggress. Wait, the Jester is dead. Look, the Jester might just die here. Because Selesha goes first. He picks the Hound Master, he goes for the Harry right now, because this is the only thing that can access the Jester. The Jester might just drop dead right now, right here. Is it here? Oh, yeah, and this, this is, is absolutely absurd here. This you is madness. Time, go back and forth, lose the game, win the game, lose the game. Can you imagine? Why did he just not finale this freaking Hound Master before? This, this was, was not the time to play defensive. No, he had to just finale and hope he doesn't die from either. If he finales this, he goes to the fourth row as well. He's okay there. I've just been given a little note by my production team, i.e. Cherry. We have not seen that uh, Jester get a finale kill in either game. Yeah, it's either weird. Like, I think he's just too hesitant with this. You should be greedy with finale sometimes. If, if you play against stress comes specifically, you should be just always greedy with the finales. Because right now, he just I think he just threw away the lead he had. That finale was I, his... Was I'm a 4v2. Really this is going to be a 4v2 game. Right now we have double heals on Silentia's side. Very little backline access. This Vestal and this Houndmaster just wreaking havoc in his ranks. And, you know, obviously both of them might just die. One of them might die from the from the Flagellant sometime in the future. But right now it's looking pretty good. Like, I think he just killed the Flagellant as well. Silentia could just go for the kill here. Obviously very risky to do this, but he can try anyway. You zealous him at least. You zealous him at least to get these stress build up. Yeah. I think you just zealous him twice. You, you just, yeah, right. Look at this. Oh, oh that's not enough stress, though. There's just not enough stress. Uh, oh wait, it isn't it? Is it though? He he goes for the he kills this right now. He just goes for Hounds Harry, and he kills this. Oh my goodness, he kills the freaking Flagellant right now. I mean, man, these um, talking about this kind of high level play Silentius had. And life's a lich as well. He's getting this far. Quarterfinals. I don't oh, know. Man, see that death right off the bat. I think Lich here, he's going to have to get quite lucky with this RNG to get a killing blow to take it down. But we're also seeing very quick plays here from both of them. We've seen really just, to us, obvious, obvious misplays. In the moment, perhaps they were overthinking Ooh. it. I think this might be one of the issues with um, being perhaps not the most veteran player in terms of games you've played but trying to be very smart. You overthink things now and again, and you'll just um, you'll just kind of fuck yourself. It's like, I feel like, the, honestly, if, you, if you're trying to learn just, uh, first of all, learn like what you're supposed to be using him, and just try to use the finale whenever you get the chance to. Because I, I, I feel like I find a lot of success with the Jester play, just, you know, finaleing the targets. Uh, exactly. I mean, it gets, we're against a stress comp. The idea of a stress comp is that the longer you live, the more you're going to kill yourself. Yeah. You, know? you get that finale, take one of them down. That way you actually really have a giant advantage. Because Salenti here, not even running the mana times. No. Not running the mana times. This like if you can get rid of a hound master from a who is on a control composition, why why would you not do this? Why would you not do this? I'm so tilted by that. I think perhaps Lich um perhaps he thought he was in a kind of considerably losing position and he wanted to save his finale for the second kill obviously in hindsight we can feel that, that was a really really bad idea but maybe from his perspective doing that could have won him the game he would have lost if he just did use that finale really quickly yeah the devil doesn't go through either like both both times as well so this probably means that the vessel, this vessel is just going to live, and there is very little that can be done against Salencia's triple healing composition right now. He has three heals on the uh, on the team. That's crazy, crazy big. And no matter what the leech does, like I think there is like zero windows of opportunity for him to actually kill someone right now. 
in, again, it's turn seven, and we're seeing a build with a fl the flagellant first to die. When the flagellant is your first character to die, you know he wasn't the first to die in the last game, I believe, but he uh, they they didn't heal him, and he got a very lucky death blow, took him down. Flagellant, you need to support. He is ridiculous. He's such a strong character. Keeps your team life. He applies damage. The jester as well. The reason the jester is there is for the early finale. He didn't use it. He's got this team. Obviously, he knows how to use because he's at this point in the tournament. But maybe at that turn four mark, like what happened last game, he just it kind of all broke down for him. It was a little unknown for him. Hadn't been in these territories before. Didn't know how to play. And still, he's playing very, very quickly here. Maybe he just made the wrong decisions. I mean, Sledge is also doing a lot of making a lot of smart moves. He's not trying. To, he's trying not to take too much damage on his characters right now. So he is not trying. He's trying not to trigger the repost, which is very important because this means like he's basically being super super safe right now. There's like zero ways for Lich to kill him. I think if the most he... dangerous point against Silentia is when he's in a position that is kind of muffed out. If he needs to um, think of a completely new situation, he might flounder a little bit if he has, if he's having to play very 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 quickly. But in a solved scenario like this, as the Lich, you're scared. No, it's, it's just, oh, I think it's just all done and dusted again. Yeah. It's, it's quite a shame, but this, it just doesn't look too good for, for the Lich right now. I and mean, it's, just... it's been a very, very quick two matches, Mike. We've been here for an yeah. hour and 15 minutes. I almost yeah. want to do a game on you again on stream, just because this has been so quick. It's just crazy how fast this was indeed. So the rest of drops the healing. So then she just plays the safe and he wins this every single time right now. Because I don't know what would have to happen for Lich to 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 get this game right now. I, I, it's just some you need to have like a miracle happen. I think Selenshi just needs to desync right now and then Lich gets it. I mean, even if he desyncs, we've got that ruling. Well, obviously we're going to rule and yeah. just Yeah, yeah, that. definitely. Like, this is over. This is just over. I think the Lich just fundamentally. Perhaps not misunderstanding I don't mean for the guy, but he didn't really utilize either the flagellant or the jester well at all, really. You know, mm, not enough. For okay. a no finale kills in either games from the jester. We've yeah. seen in previous jester versus jester matchups. We've seen, you know, four finale kills in two games. Both of the jesters popping off, going crazy. So do you think he's just not comfortable on the pick? Maybe he just picked a comp that is strong, but he's not comfortable on, because this is what it looks like to me. Because, like, Jester is, like, one of the trickiest characters to play. Oh, my God, it's 18 wow. repose, though. But Jester is definitely one of the most tricky characters you can pick in the in the Bush's Circus right now. So, honestly, I feel like this is uh, this might be in the, the case right now. Like, he just picked a non-comfort pick. And he's just, get, he's just getting punished for this, right? He's just getting punished for this. Because um, Jester really takes a lot of game sense before you can start using him properly. I think especially the Jester Flagellant match. I mean, I don't want to uh, begrudge the man for thinking he would survive on an 80% death blow chance, but I'm not entirely sure that's what happened. And also, he wasn't really in a position where he needed to risk that. We saw, I believe, even Silentia made that grave misplay with a hammer mask and not healing himself. Both of these players, um, they've been very strong in terms of their mechanical gameplay. But strategy-wise, I think the Lich just kind of started uh, breaking down towards his later half of the game. And I think that's really what let Silentia just take an aggressive stranglehold. Because with that double, st double stun comp, if you have any advantage, it, it, you've just won. Wow. Honestly, though, you have to admit it. Lich has been playing those last few turns very, very conservatively and very smart as well. So, even though it looks like it's just all over for him, he is still holding on. Surprisingly yeah. enough, he's just holding on. It. This is a crit heal from the region, wasn't it? It's crazy. <laughs> oh, 18 crit just right back at you, mate. Right back at you. So he, he might just lose the Helmmaster right now. This yeah, might not I mean, be over yet. Yeah, we might see the tables turn here. That riposte as well. Uh, he's, he's just playing with fire. This oh, is dead oh, Game three. Five to Lich. Come on, you take this here. Yeah, we want to see game three. So we're going to see pass here from the vessel. Unable to stun. Unable to do anything other than move back. All we have is the Holy Lance on Silenti's side to push forward for that killing blow. Oh no! Oh no! Is this going to be game three? Like I think Silentia was just game three. We want it to be a game three. He could have just healed everybody to full HP, just waited for those 
for those uh, afflictions to eat Lich alive, I think, but that's just not gonna happen right now. Is it now? Is it? <laughs> oh, that's crazy. But you have to consider the fact that, you know, the Crusader doesn't get pushed right now and the Arbalist is just dead. He gets pushed. Holy shit. <laughs> Can you believe this, oh man? My God. No way. Is this gonna be it? Is this just gonna be going free? I thought this was over. Can so you I think imagine? Right, you're talking about how conservatively Salenti was playing. I think at a certain point, you can't play that conservatively. You need to go bop, 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 or left hook, right hook, jab, you're down. And I think right now, the Lich taking advantage of just how slow this has been played. Oh, man, I don't know. <laughs> That's just crazy right now. Because I, I don't think Lich has a way of actually killing Salencia right, right here still. Though, I, I just want to see how what comes out of this, because... If Salencia had just been playing super conservative leader, like he had been well, just. I think what we might all... want to see here is that, that spamming of the bowler matched, matched rather with the spamming mm -hmm. of the repost. That way. You see this big oh, crit. No. If he's on death floor, oh, he, he loses this now. This is over. Because mm -hmm. he just set that himself up. Play. Yeah. This, that's just over. Sadly, that's, we get like a moment of hype here, but this is just going to be a double kill Zelos, I think. That's by the looks of it. At least a single kill, though. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, can you Life's imagine this game without the Hound Master being there for like four or five freaking turns? Exactly. I mean, Life's a Lich, he was given that, um, I mean, let's say the light at the end of the tunnel there. And as he was sprinting towards it, he just tripped over himself a little bit, threw his bowler, pushed the vessel into third. Even if that zealous accusation didn't kill both of them, that vessel stun could have gone through. Could have locked the game down, completed it, whatever happened. Life to Lich here. GG. I, he was given enough chances, I think. But um, a quick game there, a quick matchup. Very explosive, very good, as we expected. Please. But boy, oh boy. Pretty solid, pretty convincing. Yeah, that's what you said, though. Like, if you are uh, Lich, uh, if you're Lich, honestly, if you're Lich, you just want to make fewer mistakes and you're gonna be good. He just made this crucial mistake and he just, I think this just sealed the deal for him. Yeah, I know. I, I handed up the finale because I thought I could get away with, uh, you know, not mm -hmm. using it for one more turn. Yeah, yeah as, as soon as I saw that you, you know, like, attempted to go for a very greedy finale, I just sort of made a mental note that the game, while it wasn't over, was, ve was suddenly very heavily in my favor when it wasn't that case before, so... When it would, when the game was in your favor, there, when you were playing very conservatively, <laughs> did you ever think it might bite you back in the ass? Did you think maybe there was a point where I could have gone aggressively there, but it's it's, it's just better to be safe? I mean, I, I thought I was pretty aggressive, considering like he was down on three people almost. I was that was the silencio, sorry. Oh, I apologize. <laughs> so then, I presume you mean for like that end. I mean, there, literally where... for the end, that last that last. Bit. Right. Yeah. Uh, there were a lot of moments where I saw plays that I could do that were extremely aggressive. However, I just simply decided to go into, you know, I went against the decision. I decided to keep playing very passively as I knew that there was realistically no way that he would be able to wear me down. And I think the most aggressive play I did was when the um, Houndmaster crit on the heel for his lick wounds. I thought I was safe to just simply go for a Hound's Harry, but I was then crit back on the Retribution and he died. I think that, that was. Makes and a lot the, of sense. 